The troops are on the move, ready to roll and storm southwest Oklahoma, where General Fred Whitfield is ready to wage war against the enemy. The defending world champion always packs plenty of ammunition. And the same goes for another reigning world champion. Cody Hancock is focused on his target all right. He's got another title lined up smack dab in the middle of the crosshairs. The big guns are locked and loaded here in Lawton, and they're about to explode on the Wrangler Pro Rodeo Tour. says there are no mountains here in the Sooner State of Oklahoma. As you can plainly see, the Great Plains near Fort Sill are anything but flat. Hi everybody, I'm Carl Arkey here in the rugged Wichita Mountains outside of Lawton, Oklahoma. Now this is a 59,000 acre wildlife refuge where the uh, bison and the longhorn cattle are allowed to roam freely. Don't get the wrong idea, though. We won't have anybody riding buffaloes tonight. However, we do have a rank pen of bulls here at the 63rd Annual Lawton Rangers Rodeo, our seventh stop on the Wrangler Pro Rodeo Tour. That means we're heading down the home stretch towards the big tour finale at the American Airlines Center in Dallas coming up this October. And so I guess, Butch Knowles, it's time for these cowboys and cowgirls to put the pedal to the metal. Time's running out on the tour, Butch. We're well into the second half of our Pro Rodeo Summer Tour, and for a lot of these guys here in Lawton, Oklahoma tonight, they can feel that clock ticking. For bareback riders Chad Klein and Marvin Garrett, well, tonight could be very important. This is the first appearance we've seen Chad Klein make on our Summer Tour, and the second time we've watched Marvin Garrett. We saw him pick up seven points earlier in Salinas, California. Another note, neither one of these Cowboys are in the top 15 in the world standings at this point. Now it takes about 13 points to move into our tour standings. Those are the guys that are going on to Dallas, Texas later on this fall. Once there, the money they win also counts towards qualifying to the National Finals Rodeo. So how important is our tour to Chad Klein and Marvin Garrett? To put it very simple, this could be huge. Bareback riding is the first order of business here at the Lawton Rangers Rodeo, where we've got two of the top five riders in our tour standings. Jason Jeter, James Boudreaux, we'll see them coming up in just a little while. But first of all, it's Chuck Logue getting the party started, Butch. Well, Chuck Logue's had a very good summer. Now, Chuck won the world, but it's been a long time ago. He's just back rodeoing strong, having fun, and you know Chuck is riding quite well. Surefoot Sue is the name of this bareback horse, and Chuck, his hand came out of that rig, and right at the end, you can see all the Army guys here that are here tonight. There is a slug of them, so it's going to be exciting. Yeah, those guys enjoying a little R&R &R here at the rodeo, and Chuck Logue enjoying his ride on Surefoot Sioux. Lawton's home to Fort Sill, of course, and Jennifer Douglas has our history lesson. Thanks, guys. The city of Lawton is celebrating their centennial this year, but 132 years ago, Fort Seal, Oklahoma, was started as a cavalry command post. Now specializing in artillery, they train 24,000 men and women every year. A lot of them are here tonight celebrating the rodeo and a break from basic training. And when you're in basic training, Butch, you got to let off a little steam. I think they're here to do just that, Carl. So is Chad Klein, time for his protege. He's climbing on board dance time. Well, this could be a big ride for Chad. Now, remember, 13 points is about 12th place in our tour standing so far. For, for these guys, don't panic. Just go get the job done. Chad Klein right now thinking, you know, I could have a little better dancing partner. When you compare that horse to Chuck Logue's horse and some of the horses that are yet to buck, I don't think that's quite enough. Chad has had some good horses in his career. Three NFR appearances, finished 12th in the world a year ago, and Chad Klein will settle for a score of 75 here at the Lawton Rangers Rodeo, where marvelous Marvin Garrett is up next in the shoots. Of course, Marvin, a four-time world champion, a Hall of Famer, has been to the uh, national finals 12 times himself. Well, with more than $1.2 million in his pockets, Marvin's had a great career, and he's riding as well as ever right now Trying to move back into the top 15, Miss Redigo. Well, that's kind of a day off, especially if you're a four-time world champion, Marvin Garrett. Marvin needed a score of 79 to take over the lead, and we'll see what our Wrangler officials have come up here with at the uh, L.O. Ranch, where Butler and Gaylord and Andrews Rodeo Company are the stock contractors. Well, Marvin Garrett, you know, he went along pretty easy in his career. In the last three years, he's been tested a little bit. Colorado Springs in 1998. 
had a horse rare around in the chute with him and broke his riding arm, and that really cost him going to the NFR. Then the next year, he was, of course, in that plane accident with those four guys. So Marvin Garrett's overcome some huge adversity. Right now, though, 80 points for Marvin Garrett. He likes where he's at. And, of course, his brother Mark is going through some adversity right now, trying to come back from injury himself. Here is Scott Montague out of South Dakota. The horses, what a jag. Scott, number 11 in the world, but he has two points on our tour. He picked those up in Vernal. So Scott needs a big ride here at Lawton. He has opened up. Now look at the air this horse is getting. Jump and kick comes around in that circle. That's what we've been waiting to see. Scott, of course, had a big victory in Houston earlier this year, way back last winter. Young Cowboy, 25 years old, has his card now for about six years, and he's really starting to come into his own. Oh, well, boy, what a ride for Montague. You know, this horse, when you compare the horses to the other horses we watch, of course, we watch Chad Klein and Chuck Logs and Marvin Garretts, there's no comparison. This horse is probably four or five points better than those other horses. He jumps, he's stronger, he's got more power. And of course, Scott made that great ride, and that's why right now he's number one. Scott Montague raising the bar with that score of 82. But fellows like Jason Jeter, Lan Lajeunesse, and Scott Johnston are waiting in the wings on the Wrangler Pro Rodeo Tour. ESPN 2's presentation of the Lawton Rangers Rodeo from Lawton, Oklahoma is brought to you by Wrangler, the only jeans and shirts endorsed by the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association. By Original Coors, expect more from an original. Original Coors. By Dodge, do not follow, do not conform, be different. And by Justin Boots, standard of the West since 1879. Along with Butch Knowles, I'm Carl Arkey. Back at the L.O. Ranch in Lawton, Oklahoma. Bareback riding going on. Our leader is Scott Montague with that score of 82. Now there's only two Cowboys in the top 15 in two events. Cash Myers is one. Here's the other, Butch. Well, Scott Johnston, he knows if he wants to win an all-around of the world title, he really needs to make the NFR in two events. That's why he's so focused on the bareback riding. Right now he's number 12 in our tour standings in the bareback riding. He's in the tour standings in the saddle bronc riding. If he could get to Dallas and have a big week, that's exactly what he needs to have happen. Scott needed to have a big score to overtake Scott Montague. Had to have an 83, but he'll settle for a 77 on Skulls Tequila. Well, here comes William Pittman the second, who is on the bubble right now. William is right on the edge of the Pro Tour standings. You're standing at 11th right now. How important is it for you to be here in Lawton? It's really important because we got four more left to the end of the deal. There's a lot of money going to be in Dallas at the end of the year, so we need to try to be there. And that money actually goes towards two different things, doesn't it? Yeah, it counts for the world standings now. So every little bit we can get in there, we need to try to get for it. You know, Butch, I'm so impressed every time I think about the poise that this cowboy showed last December. His family home burns down back in Mississippi, but he stayed focused and he rode well at the Wrangler National Finals. You know, William, I think, is an upcoming solid bareback rider. He's going to be around for a long time. He's just getting his game going. I'm very impressed with William Pittman. And right here, he makes a very solid ride. William Pittman getting a hand from the Dodge pickup men. William, of course, also needing a score of 83, and he, as well as Scott Johnston, have to settle for scores of 77 here at the Lawton Rangers Rodeo, where Wes Stevenson is about to climb on board. Skulls roly-poly. We saw him ride well in Salinas. You know, this is the third time we've seen Wes ride. He picked up eight points in Salinas, seven and a half points at Oakley, and he's got his hands full right now. This is an outstanding little horse. Comes from Sammy Andrews. He's also the second stock contractor here, helping Benny Butler out. And Roly Poly just got it on. What a little horse. Wes Stevenson, all of 21 years of age, helped to be a little bit younger in this event? Well, you know, I think uh, age helps in any sport. You know, younger, you got uh, better eye-hand coordination. I think you're physically better. But then 
they say experience helps, and it does. You know, these older guys, they may not have the same agility, but they have the experience. Sometimes that pays off, too. Well, here is Jason Jeter from Fort Worth, Texas. Hasn't made it to the national finals yet, and that's the operative phrase, yet. He's well on his way. Yeah, he's well on his way. This is the fifth time we've seen him in our tour round. That's how well he's ridden all year long. And this great big bay horse, Motown, here's a veteran bareback horse, Benny Butler's. Many trips to the national finals, but Motown didn't have the best trip we've seen that old horse have. But still an outstanding bareback horse. We'll take another look at it. Tell us about Motown. Well, Motown actually started out in the saddle bronc riding. You can see from his size, that's uh, where he probably should have been. But then uh, they moved him over to the bareback riding, and Motown has just been a perennial horse at the national finals. This horse is probably, I'm going to guess, between 25 and 26 years old. That's a great horse. Just not a lot of kick in Motown tonight. Well, Motown, you know. He's had better days. Sure, he's had better days, and he'll have better days. Just like the Cowboys. They have good days, they have bad ones. Here's Lan Lajeunesse from Morgan, Utah. He's made it to all three tour finales. He is working on his fourth. Lan is probably one of the hottest guys going right now, and that's saying a lot after you watch Kelly Wardell's pace he's had this year. But Lan, right now, number two in the world standings. This is the fourth tour around we've watched him have, and he started out pretty cool early Earlier this year in the winter, winter rodeos and then into the summer rodeos, he was just kind of moving along. But he hit a gear when we got to Oakley, and he has been hot. You know, if you're around Lan at all, I think you're impressed by his mental approach. Nothing phases him an awful lot. Even if he gets off to a slow start on the season, that doesn't bother him. He knows he can bring it back later on. And, you know, I think that shows up at the national finals rodeo or when he gets to the tour finals. He shines there because pressure doesn't bother Lan. You put good horses under him, he makes perfect rides. He doesn't get too excited, but he doesn't get down on himself either. And he comes up with a score of 80. That moves him into a tie for Second place, of course, our leader still is Scott Montague. And if anybody's going to catch Scott, it's going to be James Boudreaux, our last bareback rider here in Lawton. Well, we watched James at Sisters, Reno, and Bernal, and he's been riding well also. Copenhagen Omelie, and this is another Sammy Andrews bareback horse. And James, he just matched up with a great little horse. What a bareback ride. James Boudreaux coming through in the clutch. It's the bottom of the ninth. Bases are loaded, two are out, and he comes up with a great ride right here. Well, he was really matched up with a good horse, and he knew it. That horse set up and kicked good. Didn't have a lot of moves, not difficult to ride, but yet fired and gave him everything he needed to be a lot of points. Look at this. This horse just sets up and then jumps and kicks right square. Watch that rigging. Not a lot of movement in that rigging. One move maybe left and right, but James just sat there, lifted. Great ride. Copenhagen Omelene with a big night and a big night for James Boudreau as well. He scores 82. Scott Montague scores 82. And so that means there's a tie for the title here at the Lawton Rangers Rodeo in Southwest Oklahoma. It was a two-way tie tonight, but two completely different circumstances. In James' case, you actually have over 25 points, so this should put you in. I hope so. I don't know how much it's going to take. Uh, they said about 23 or 4 usually, but that's what it took last year. I don't know what it will take this year. So. Your circumstance, it was completely different. You had two points, so this gives you a running chance at the Pro Tour, doesn't it? Yeah, I've, uh, I've not been doing very good at these tour rodeos. I had a good winter series, and uh, but the summer series is needing to pick up. They're running out of time. A big night in Lawton means James Boudreaux is just a half point behind front runner Jason Jeter, who's got 37 and a half points. Meanwhile, Lan Lajeunesse is in fourth. We're going to slap a full Nelson on some rough, tough steers when we come back to Lawton. That, my friends, is the beautiful view atop Mount Scott, 4,000 feet above sea level in the Wichita Mountains, overlooking beautiful Lake Latonka. Carl Arkey, along with Butch Knowles, getting set for the steer wrestling. Brian Fields is our tour leader with 30 points. Clay Furch is second with 25. And we'll get things started with the rookie, Ted Golliher from Cascade, Montana. Well, Ted was four seconds flat on his first steer to qualify. The first guy out tonight and jumps out on top of things, 4.1 seconds. 
So that'll make the rest of these guys back in there and try it a little harder. Now this steer, not a quick handling steer. You see how he kind of stopped? He kind of had to roll him into that fall. That slowed things down just a little bit, but still 4.1. That'll work for now. Ted Gallagher setting the standard for the rest of the steer wrestlers here at the Lawton Rangers Rodeo. And here comes Teddy Johnson from Shakota, Oklahoma. If there's any tougher event to compete in with a bum knee, I don't know what it is, Butch. No, and a lot of times this event creates bum knees. That's the problem. It's really hard on your knees. And Teddy Johnson, he may be competing with a bum knee, but it doesn't appear to bother him right now. Teddy, well up into the top 15 in the world. He came in here with nine points. Nice run for Johnson. So Teddy Johnson slides into second place in our steer wrestling just underway here. And uh, here's a guy who doesn't need a rope, just some good horses and some bare hands to get those steers down to the ground. Oh, Rope Myers is just fun to watch. In this event. He is so quick and so aggressive. And the start is so important. It's a quick steer wrestling, and he just made it quicker. <laughs> oh, Nice run for Myers, four flat. So move him to the top of the list. Rope, of course, has been to the last six national finals, was the runner-up in 1995, and shows some of the form he used in Las Vegas. Well, you know, he came in with about 11 points, but he's 28th in the world standings, about 13,000 out of 15th, so that's a big run right there for Rope Myers. So Rope Myers takes over the lead, and here comes a big fella, Bob Loomis, from Folsom, Louisiana. He was 3-9 and nine on his first run. Well, Loomis went to the national finals back in 1992. Right now, number two in the world, though. He's having a great year. Now, this theory was a little out of shape when he caught him. He was four and six, but the reason he was four and six, he didn't have that leverage he needed. He was a little low when he catches his steer. Take another look at it. Now, watch his body position as he catches his steer. See how low it is right mm -hmm. there? The idea is you want to be kind of up and over the head of that steer a little more. Luckily, he's big and strong. He went ahead and made him go into the fall, but that slowed the run down just a little bit. Not just about size and strength. You also have to have the leverage. Here comes Chad Hagen from Leesville, Louisiana, making a strong comeback after a knee injury last year. Well, that's a lot to think about coming back off a knee injury, but Chad, he's having good success this year. He picked up 11 points at Oakley, but you can see some problems on this run. When he caught the steer, his feet came up out of the ground. He tried to hurry him into the fall. As he gets up, he's a little disgusted. And five and six. Yeah, Chad will not be happy with that time, but Rope Myers is with his. Rope is our leader right now at the Lawton Rangers Rodeo with a time of four flat. But Steve Duhon is on deck. Welcome to the Rodeo on ESPN2. Set up for the 40th. Way back in 1894, Geronimo, the Apache warrior, was brought to Fort Sill to live out the final 15 years of his life, and he is buried in the Apache Cemetery on Beef Creek on Fort Sill. Welcome back to the Lawton Rangers Rodeo, everybody. Carl Arkey along with Butch Knowles. Rope Myers, our leader here in the steer wrestling, where Shane Crawford is backing into the box. Well, Shane qualified. He was 3.8 seconds on his first steer, so Shane can be ow, ow. quick. He needs to be 3 and 9. Has a quick steer, he sets, but you can see he's out of shape, that inside horn. He lost it, but he went ahead and threw the steer in five and one. But what could have been quick ended up being a little long. Rope Myers' lead is still safe as Shane Crawford moves into fourth place in the standings. And here comes Guy Yarbrough, the first time that we've seen him. He's out of Balt City, Texas. He too was 3.8 seconds on his first steer. Another steer just eases out there and stops quick, and this is what we've been waiting to see. 4.2 seconds. Close, but not going to get him there. Yarborough, 32 years old, and we'll take another look at his run. Well, he catches his steer really quick right here. Shapes him good, but watch how slow the steer took to fall over. That's why he was 4.2 instead of a 3.8. A little bad luck there, but still a solid run. Tom White looking for a solid run himself out of Hugo, Oklahoma, also making his first tour appearance this summer. Well, Big Tom White, we had a chance to watch him quite a bit in the last few years. He can be quick. Nice run for White, providing he's clean at the barrier, and he is, so four flat. Now that ties him for the lead. Tom White with a good run. We'll watch it again. The hazer working well, the steer working well, and so is Tom White. Well, you can see everything was set up good here. No mistakes, a clean catch. He handled the steer good, into the fall good. 
When you see a good run, you'd see no mistakes. That's what it's all about. So there's your co-leader, Tom White. He's tied with Rope Myers. This is Kyle Drussel from Granbury, Texas, making his first tour stop appearance. It's also the first time he's been here to Lawton. He's impressed by this setup. Well, Kyle can be quick. He was 3-5 on his first stair, and he's down the arena ways. That stair kind of wadded up a little bit in the throw. He had to roll the legs out to receive the flag. Does it in 4.9. Tough for Kyle to set his feet that time. So a 4-9, and nine, and that moves him into sixth place. And Steve Duhon's coming up. Semi-retired? Well, not really. This is the first time appearance for former world champion Steve Duhon, but you haven't been hurt, have you? No, I've just been sitting at home and resting. I didn't have a real good winter, and I wanted to be home with my boys and family and play and practice with them. So just kind of stayed there and figured I'd come to these last couple pro tours and hopefully get into the tour finale. Now, as an experienced world champion, is it a lot easier to make that decision to go home and be with your family? Yes, it is, especially with these pro tours coming out. I can still afford to feed my family and just go to these good rodeos. And if I make the tour finale, I still got a shot at making the finals the way they got the money now. So it's a lot better and gives me a lot better chance to be with the family. How good is Steve Duhon? Well, even going part-time last year, Butch, he still finished 33 in the world. He's a three-time world champion. Well, Steve Duhon is always tough. And, you know, like he said, with the money counting towards the NFR now at the tour finale, that's a guy that can scare you. If you're easing in there in 14th or 15th and you're not at the finale, this guy will come get you. He's amazing. When you're not going full-time, though, how tough is it to stay sharp? Well, he may not be going full-time, but he's in that arena at home all the time with his boys. He's throwing steers. And by the way, he's steer wrestling right here. He's as sharp as he's ever been. Four and four for Steve Duhon out of Sonora, Texas. Of course, if you're going to win the big bucks here at the Rangers Rodeo, you had to be four flat. Those are the times for Rope Myers and Tom White. We are so used to seeing Rope on all of our shows, but you didn't make the first couple of shows. You're just catching in here, aren't you? Yeah, it's uh, it's turning around. You know, uh, God's good even when rodeo isn't. And <laughs> here, uh, the first part of this year, rodeo wasn't really treating me the uh, the best. I, I, I had a few good steers, but I didn't have them at the same rodeo, and it's turned around now. I've been able to uh, put some good runs together back to back, and, uh, and that's what it takes uh, um, to make these tour finals. Rope Myers finds Lawton to his liking. He picks up some big points and moves up to third in our tour standings. Well, don't go away. We're going to saddle up because Rodeo's classic event is coming up next on the Wrangler Pro Rodeo Tour. Ah, yes, the Dust Bowl days, just a distant memory here in southwest Oklahoma. Lake Latonka, just one of the many lakes here in the beautiful Wichita Mountain Wildlife Refuge. Carl Arkey along with Butch Knowles back here at Fort Sill in Lawton, Oklahoma for the Lawton Rangers Rodeo. However, we're going to go from the Wichita Mountains to the Pikes Peak or Bust Rodeo in the Rocky Mountains. That's coming up on the Wrangler Pro Rodeo Tour October 14th, so check your local listings. Saddle Bronc riding on tap now. Here's the series standings. Tommy Reeves on top with 41 points. Jess Martin is in his rear view mirror and we'll see Jess in just a moment. But first, T.C. Holloway from Eagle Butte, South Dakota on Dirty Harry. Well, this is a Sammy Andrews Bronc and this is a good one. T.C.'s had some success. We've watched him at Reno and Bernal. He's riding very well. In fact, he's getting stronger and stronger as the summer goes on. And this is a typical ride for T.C. Holloway. No mistakes, good style. I've said it before, but I'm so impressed with TC. I just, he's fun to watch, right, Bronx? I'm with you, Butch. I think he gets stronger as the summer goes on. He really does. You know, he's on a roll right now. Good mark out, and this horse just perfect. Jumps, kicks straight out across there. You know, TC makes no mistakes. If he would have made a mistake, well, then those judges really hammer you when they do that because this horse is so nice to ride. If you make a mistake, that's a big problem. And a score of 79 will get the attention of the rest of the Saddle Brock riders who are back in the chutes, including Jess Martin. And I'll tell you what, we need to call out the Lawton Fire Department just to cool this guy off. I'm not sure you could do it with that. He is mighty hot. Boy, what a battle. All three of these guys on top, of course, Tommy Reeves, Dan Mortensen, and Jess. We'll see what Jess can do. Now Jess comes on. He needs to be 80 points to take the lead. He's got his hands full. 
This is a colt to Benny Butler's, and man, oh man, Jess Martin, <laughs> he just made a fantastic broad cry. Like the dismount, too. <laughs> well, I think he meant to land on his feet. It didn't work out, but who cares? It's after the whistle, but look at this big base set up. Go one way, then the other. Jess sets his feet. Very aggressive ride for Martin. Right there in his mind, he knows he's got his hands full. If he can keep it up, well, that 79 points is going to go away, and that's exactly where it went. 84 points for Martin. 84 on a great dance partner, Secret Agent. Here comes Billy Etbauer, has made it to the national finals 12 straight years, but a sore thumb? Well, that streak might be in jeopardy, Butch. Well, Billy's had his problems this year, but, you know, he's creeping up. It looks like that horse may have got some rain from him. Look how long that uh -oh. rain is. And when it's that long, you see Billy kind of smiling. I think that horse got some rain right out of the chute. If the horse goes straight, Billy's going to get away with it. But when they turn back and you have all that rain, well, you can see what happens. Even Billy's going to hit the ground. So even the best will hit the ground from time to time. But Billy Etbauer, he will be back. Well, Shane Lyons, he'll certainly remember his first summer tour stop. He had a rough ride that night. Well, you know, he had last year's bucking horse of the year up, at, up in Cody, Wyoming. He missed the horse out of the chute or he would have won a lot of money. So no mistakes here at the chute. And this horse ducks, dives, not the funnest little horse to ride as we've seen tonight. Boot, scoot, and boogie. Now that horse is usually a little straighter than that, but Shane, he'll take it. Score of 76 for Shane Lyon on Boot Scootin'. Had to come up with a score of 85 if he was going to catch Jess Martin. Well, Shane, you know, that horse really ducked hard there to the left, and Shane gets under everything, gets going again, then he comes back to the right. Good, strong finish, though, for Shane. Almost hit the ground. 76 for Shane Lyon. Well, it's a long trip to Lawton, Oklahoma from Maple Creek, Saskatchewan. Here comes the Canadian Dan Black on Mucho Dinero. Well, here's a guy you're going to see a lot of. You know, three times he's been to the Canadian National Finals. He went to college right there in Pendleton, Oregon. That's when I first watched Danny Black. He's impressive, and he's just getting going, but he just got going. Is that big bay ducked and dive faked one way or the other off that fence? No score for Dan, and boy, that's a bad feeling. That can happen to anybody. The Big Bay had Dan climbing the fences here in Lawton, where Dan Mortensen is waiting for his turn. Come on back on the Wrangler Pro Rodeo Tour. Fort Sill established in the late 1800s, the Army setting up camp to stop the Indians from raiding settlements in Kansas and Texas. It is now known, though, as the Center of Fires, where the Army conducts field artillery training on 94,000 acres. Carl Arkey along with Butch Knowles back here in Lawton. Saddle Bronc riding well underway. Jess Martin, your leader, with 84 points. But here comes a man who's been making a living in front of the TV lights, Boy, Dan Mortensen. These tours have been so good to Dan Mortensen. He is well on his way to Dallas, Texas, but he may need it. You know, he trails Tommy Reeves in the world standings by about $50,000. So he needs to make up some ground before the NFR, and this is the way he's going to do it. Get to Dallas and then uh, have some awfully good luck once he gets there. Copenhagen Racketeer, a rough ride right there. As you'll see on the replay, this horse stumbles a little bit. But Dan is so good about just keeping good timing with horses. When a horse stumbles, it's tough to pick that timing back up. Mortensen, there's two ways to do it. You either hang in your candle and wait through a complete jump and then go on with your timing, or you hang in the front end and pick him right back up. Dan is so good about picking him up quicker. That's why he's won so many world titles. He is amazing. Dan, the man, Mortensen, able to make those adjustments. He had to have a score of 85, comes up with an 83, and that's good for second place. Here in our tour round in Lawton, where Mike Uthier has got himself a pretty good draw. Ronnie Wiggles is one of the top saddle bronc horses, but you tell me that he actually didn't start out that way. No, he was a broke saddle horse at one time, uh, but he used to be a kid's horse, really. And he was bucking off the grown men that right, rode him, uh, the team roped on him. And so uh, Sammy Andrews got him, and he's been a bucking horse for quite a few years now. I'm not sure I'd call him a kid's horse. <laughs> <laughs> no. Boy, he'll make you get your rope out of your hand in a hurry if you're a team roper. Well, Mike Uthier, he's having a good year himself. He's only got four and a half points on our tour, so the matchup right here with Roni Wiggles was an important one for Uthier. 
Boy, this young man, it looks like he's on his way to his first national finals rodeo as well. Good mark out. Look at that big roan horse, rare out of there. You know, when you have a horse like this too, sometimes a broke saddle horse, the rain, they're, they're more particular with that head. They don't take the rain and keep it in one spot. They, as you lift, they bring it back to you because they're broke, but not this case. He just turned out of there and bucked. Great ride. 81 point ride for Mike Uvier, who finished 54th in the world a year ago. I don't think he's going to finish that load this year. Well, here comes Rod Hay, who's going to use the force on Darth Vader. Well, a good matchup also. And of course, Roddy Hay, he's another guy that's been just on fire this summer. And here we go. Good, aggressive ride by Hay. Toes straight out. I would hate to be standing down there on that arena floor trying to mark out who I think should be first, second, third, and fourth, because we have seen some outstanding bronc riding. Those Wrangler officials have their hands full. Of course, there's two officials. Each can award 50 points, half of them to the horse, half of them to the rider. Well, and that's where Roddy picks it up. His style is so good that the half he is allotted usually is well up over 20 points, so that's why he wins a lot. Nice ride, good mark out. That horse really rode around, rolled around that post, hit him a little bit, but he just picked him right back up. Just great style, look at those toes, straight out. Good style, upper body, the whole thing. Lifts on his rein. That's what you want to do if you're a saddle bronc rider. So easy to see why he finished sixth in the world a year ago and has been to 11 NFRs, including the last nine in a row. Well, here comes Rod's older brother. This is Denny Hay on Rodale Drive. Well, Denny, he's also been on a roll. He's moved all the way to 10th in the world standings. A big move, but he's got his hands full. This big sorrel turns back, and I mean, right now, he is having his hands full. Oh, man, you know, that shows right there. That horse was tough to ride. I don't care how you ride him. He's tough to stay in the middle of. Denny may not have made a beautiful spur ride, but I'll guarantee you he said a lot just staying in the middle of that one. He bucked. Denny not happy about his ride and not going to be happy about the score of 64 as he walks back to the chutes. And here comes Craig Latham. It all comes down to Craig as he tries to uh, ring the bell on Ding Dong. This is the last guy with a chance at catching Jess Martin. You see Craig right there. He lifted. He didn't lift up on his rein when he nodded. This horse can be tricky in the chute. Craig, he tries to sneak out there on him and he gets the job done. But when you do that sometimes, when they move out of the chute, you have a tendency not to lift and be aggressive on that all-important mark out, and it kind of puts you behind. Craig was behind during that ride. Craig Latham getting a lift here in Lawton from the Dodge pickup men. We'll wait for the Wrangler officials to give us the score for Craig Latham out of Goodwill, Oklahoma on Ding Dong, and he doesn't ring the bell with a score of 64. So Jess Martin is the man once again here at the Lawton Rangers Rodeo with that score of 84. He takes the title. He gets to talk to Jennifer Douglas. This win has now put Jess in the lead in the standings here in the Pro Tour Finals. You're riding with a broken hand. Well, yeah, it's on my free arm, just a small bone in my wrist. It's, it hasn't bothered my riding at all. Uh, just a little sore when I bump it getting off or in the chute or something and is, is all. So it's not really that big of a deal. You actually hadn't even heard of this horse that you were riding tonight, had you? I uh, I'd never heard the name, but uh, I knew they won the short round or the first round at Greeley on that horse, and it was Rod Warren. So I called him this afternoon, and he gave me a little bit of information on him, and uh, he was a great horse. Not a bad rider either. Jess Martin is tearing up the summer tour. Points in five of the seven stops and is 48 points, the most of any contestant in any event. Well, it's time now for the Wrangler Cowboy Cut. We'll go back to the steer wrestling and how about another look at Rope Myers? And what a run for Rope Myers. You know, he had to move up into the top 15 in the world standings. He wanted to get in there in the summer tour standings. He did it all right here with this run. This is the kind of Rope Myers stuff we've seen so much of. As they say in the Army, the caissons keep rolling along so does the Wrangler Pro Rodeo Tour. Calf roping's up next. On a clear day, you can see for miles. High atop the mountains here in the 59,000 acre Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge just outside of Lawton, Oklahoma, where we're getting all set for the calf roping. Quick check of the series standings. Brent Lewis is on top, but Cody Ole not far behind. We'll see him as well as Ricky Hyde here tonight at the L.O. Ranch, where Jim Locke is our first gunner. 
Well, the Cowboys competed in one go-around of competition. Jim Locke was 9.4 seconds on his first calf. And you can see as he just ropes that calf right around the eye, so it'll be no time for Locke. Let's see, how much was that entry fee I had to pay to come here? <laughs> yeah, these guys are into it about probably $250 just to compete. Yeah, the only sport where you really do have to pay to play. Well, here comes Terry Kitchens from Mullen, Texas. He is paid to play. He's back into the box, and now he's off after that calf. Well, he has a calf that ran pretty hard. He's down the arena ways. Now Terry gets to him in good shape, though. Now if he can hurry a quick tie, and man, he does just that. So Kitchens comes out, makes a solid run in 9.8 seconds, providing everything stays tied for the six-second procedure involved right here. Terry Kitchens waiting for that time to run out, and we'll take another look at his run as we wait for the time to run up. Well, this was a solid run. Terry, it looked as though he had to wait a little bit to get that calf clear up. His horse just needed to take one more step back. He almost cued him there a little bit. He did, and then he just hurries a tie on him. Nice run. Nice run all right for Terry Kitchens out of Mullen, Texas, a time of nine and eight. And that slides him to the top of the leaderboard here in the early going in Lawton, Texas. May not be able to stay there, though, with guys like Joe Beaver coming up. Where's Joe been lately? Joe has been fighting injuries all year long, different injuries, haven't you? How are you healing up? I'm healed good. Um, I don't think from here on out I'll be able to blame it on injuries, I hope. Um, I had a growing. I've had some problems with it the last three or four years. It tears away from the bone. and. I heard it in May, so I set out June, July, or May, June, July. I started back over the fourth at one rodeo, won a little bit. The next week I won a little more, and then that week in Nampa was good. And then I stuck a wire in my hand that sent me home for about 10 days of an infection. But, you know, I've got enough rodeos left, and I've been behind before. I'm always, it seems like in the fall is my time of year, and I'm always behind. So uh, I don't think I can blame it on anything, just if I can have a good roll the next couple of weeks and win 10 or 12,000 a week the next three or four weeks, you know, I'll have a chance. I would hate to see Big Joe's medical bills. <laughs> well, Joe, you know, he has been through some problems, but you know, his attitude is amazing. He just, when he does go, he's there to win one thing, and that's first, and oh, Joe, he took a pitch that was right around that calf size. He just, he noticed he didn't jerk his slack. Sometimes by not doing that, that loop will fall on that calf, but right here, he just didn't get it done, and that's costly right there, especially if you need to win 10 or 12,000 a week. That was his chance, or one of his chances this week right here. That picture tells a thousand words. Joe Beaver feeling a lot of mental pain after that no time here in Lawton. Well, here comes Rodeo's version of Tom Kite, the golfer who doesn't seem to win those big wins on the Pro Golfer Tour, but comes up with a big paycheck. I think that applies to Ricky Hyde. You know, that is a good deal for Ricky Hyde. But it's a good way to explain him because he really is, he's always in the hunt. He is so tough. Right here, though, he got ran right out of the hunt. This probably was the worst calf to draw out of all the calves in the pin of calves tonight. He ran like a deer. He hurried. He was wild on the end of the rope, and Ricky had problems tying him. So all that done in 19.2 seconds. Probably the slowest run he's made all summer. Yeah, it adds up to a bad night at the office for Ricky Hyde out of Mount Vernon, Arkansas, who needed a 9 and 7. Terry Kitchen still our leader with that 9 and 8 here at the Lawton Rangers Rodeo, where here comes the pride of Poplarville, Mississippi, Herbert Terrio. Well, Herbert's had some success. He's carrying 11 points into tonight's performance, and man, another calf missed out there. You don't see these guys miss very often. He and Joe, that might be a little bit of the pressure building up on him, but this calf, I guess on behalf of Herbert, this calf really broke hard to the left, and that kind of covers the calf up behind your horse's head. Herbert had to drop his arm and go ahead and take the shot. And it just didn't work. Not this time for Herbert, who gets a nice round of applause from the crowd here in Lawton, where Fred Whitfield and Cody Ole are about to go head to head when we come back. Yes, sir, hot fun in the summertime when the temperature hits 100 in southwest Oklahoma. They head for the old swimming hole up in Medicine Park. Carl Arkey along with Butch Knowles back here at the Lawton Rangers Rodeo. Calf roping underway. Terry Kitchens is your leader at 9 and 8. And here comes Scott Baker, a veteran hand from Floresville, Texas. Well, right now, this is about as wide open to calf roping as we've seen all summer long. 19.2 seconds is winning second. 
So anybody can make their move along with Scott Baker, but again, he has his problems. He has to take the rope off the calf, get him up, flank him by hand. Now he needs to secure him with the tie, and that is it. But 16.2 seconds now moves into number two in the round. That's how crazy this is. Scott didn't get any break from that calf. The uh, calf broke left, then went right, and that made it tough for old Scott. So a 16 and two for Scott Baker. And here comes Fred Whitfield from Hockley, Texas, making his second tour appearance. World champion Fred Whitfield is in the top of the pack in the world standings, but as far as the pro tour goes, it's been a little hard, hasn't it? Well, I've only made a couple short rounds this year and had a little mis mishaps in those short rounds and uh, missed a couple of calves, but I'm still optimistic. I got tonight here at Lawton, Oklahoma, and then Pendleton, Oregon, and Fort Madison, Iowa. Uh, when you come in in third, it's so easy to rack up those points, isn't it? Well, you know, it, it should be. I've got a very good calf tonight. I've got the calf that they won the first round on, and I'm just going to try to go make as good a round as I can. Of course, we're focusing on the tour, but this is a guy who's won five world titles in calf roping and uh, once was the all-around cowboy as well. Yeah, he's an amazing calf roper, and you know, he's picked up two points at Reno is all on our tour, but he's number one in the world standings. He's had a fantastic year. He just needs to pick it up on the tour, and I think he just took care of that problem. Boy, he picked him up Woo. and slammed him down a time of nine flat for Fred Whitfield. <laughs> You give Fred a good calf and a wide open calf rope, and you really don't even need a wide open calf rope. You give him a good calf, he gets a strategy together, he's going to come get you. <laughs> the soldiers <laughs> love, love it. it. You know, Fred, the only thing that would have hurt him is if he would have broken the barrier, but he didn't back off it much, maybe a little bit. That's why he wasn't probably a middle eight on this run, but he made sure he was clean at the barrier. After that, he just took care of a good calf. Hurries to him, gathers him up, quick tie. That's typical Fred Whitfield, and now he's right there where he needs to be. You give that guy a challenge, and he'll rise to the occasion. Fred Whitfield taking over the lead here in Lawton, Oklahoma, with a time of nine flat. But that lead is not safe when Cody Ohl is backing into the box. Well, and that's the deal. You know, we talk about the uh, finale in Dallas, Texas. The money counts towards the NFR. Well, that's fine if you're trying to qualify. If you're trying to win a world title, that's also important. And the battle looks like it's going to be the same guys. Cody Ohl, Fred Whitfield, Brent Lewis, Blair Burke. They're all trying to get to the finale, so they got a chance to pick up more money and make those guys have to win more at the NFR. It's, uh, it's amazing watching these guys. Now, on this run, the calf didn't cooperate for the Million Dollar Man, who, by the way, was also on the cover of the Pro Rodeo Sports News a couple of months ago for very good reason. This is the reason. Watch him go to work. Well, Cody, he holds his slack, gets to the calf in good shape, picks him up off the ground. Now, when he strings him and gathers him up, everything goes smooth, but he missed picking up that who He was going one wrap and a half hitch. He just missed it himself. The calf didn't hurt him. He hurt himself there. So he had seen the run of Fred Whitfield's, and he knew he had yeah. to take a chance. I think he was just trying to hurry a little more, but still right now, number three. Well, the last man with a shot at catching Fred Whitfield is Carter Edmondson from Macaulay, Texas. He was 8-4 and four on his first run. You know, Carter, did you see him? He nodded as he was backing up in the corner of that box. Either that means his horse doesn't score quite as good or he had a strategy going, but he just took it on and makes a solid run down there. But 11.1 .1 seconds is not going to be enough to gather up the lead. Man, that's pressure when you know Fred Whitfield's thrown down a nine flat. Well, it is pressure, and that's what it creates. And of course, this is a wide open rope, and he doesn't want to break the barrier, so he makes a pretty businessman run here. Hurries down there, gets a little crossed up on the cap, but it didn't look that bad. He makes a solid run once he gets a hold of the cap, though. Well, Carter will be in the cash, finishing fourth here at the Lawton Rangers Rodeo with that time of 11.1, but tonight, well, this round, it belongs to Fred Whitfield. General Fred Whitfield coming in on top with a time of nine seconds flat. He's in the winner's circle with Jennifer. Well, Fred told us beforehand, just one calf at a time, isn't it? Well, you know, I, I knew I had a good calf tonight, Jennifer, and I just wanted to get, make a good run. Uh, the short round was kind of falling apart before I went. I just tried to stay in my own frame of mind and just go tie that calf down, and it worked out. When you're watching the calf roping like that, do you try to watch, or do you, do you does that affect you at all well, when the calf ropers I mean, fall I, apart? I hate to watch it when it really falls apart like that, you know, because the guy goes to second guessing himself, and that's the wrong thing to do in the heat of battle. Fred Whitfield now in contention for making it to Dallas in the tour finale, but down the line, look at Cody Ohl. The points he picks up here moves him ahead of Brent Lewis on the overall leaderboard. 
rope will find yourself a partner. Team Roping's right around the corner on the Wrangler Pro Rodeo Tour. It's a sellout crowd here at the L.O. Ranch. The fans enjoying the 63rd annual Lawton Rangers Rodeo. Carl Larkey along with Butch Knowles here in Southwest Oklahoma. And a lot of that crowd coming from nearby Fort Sill, which has been named three times as the best army installation anywhere in the world. Well, one of the best team ropers in the world is David Key. He is also one of our leaders on the series tour, as is his partner, Dugan Kelly. We'll be seeing that duo coming up here tonight at the L.O. Ranch. First up, though, the team of Matt Tyler and Clay O'Brien Cooper. Matt, of course, has been to the NFR 13 times. Clay has won seven titles there. Pretty good resume. Oh, what a resume. And you know, if you remember, if you watched the rodeo at Oakley on our tour, Clay came around the corner, his bridle fell off that Bay Hill horse, and they still won third in the round. It was an amazing run, and 5.7 seconds is just amazing. But a tough team roping. There's only less than one second that separates all these guys, 6.1 to 5.2. So it's going to be a one-head shootout. These are the boys from Brazil, Jose Suarez and Lincoln Figueroa. Figueroa, the top rookie, one of the top rookies a year ago. Well, they come in with 5.9 seconds, but you can see that head loop just did not go on. That's what happens when the team roping is this quick and the first team comes out and they're 5'7", in your mind you think we got to be just as quick. We have to just take a look and make it work and sometimes that causes some problems. Sometimes you almost have to slow yourself down a little bit. Well, sometimes you need to, but you don't know, especially early like this, you don't know what those guys behind you are going to do. You have to assume they're going to be quick. Quick turnaround for Cody Ole, who's back for more. We just saw him in the calf roping. Boy, and Brett McDowell, here's a young man from Hepner, Oregon, that can heal as good as anybody in the world, but he picks up one hind foot. So they're going to end up with a 5.8 seconds. Some pretty good five. Cowboys come out of Hepner, Oregon, don't they? Well, a couple. <laughs> yeah, a couple that we know of, at least. <laughs> five, or rather 10 and eight, as they rope only one. And here comes uh, Dwayne Clay and C.R. Bradley, both out of Oklahoma. Clay is from Sepulpa and Bradley from Stillwater. Well, they come in 5.9 seconds. Now, this steer is tough to rope because he didn't run very hard. Your head and horse runs up over the top of him. 5.5 seconds, but they pick mm. up a 10-second barrier penalty. So what could have been the lead now takes them clear out of it. Yeah, speeding ticket for Dwayne Clay and C.R. Bradley. That's a tough one right there. A couple of California Cowboys right here doing well on the tour. Paul Mullins and Dennis Watkins. Well, you know, these guys right now, they're about $14,000 out of the top 15, so the tour is really important to them. We watched them at Reno. They won second there. They won eighth at Salinas. But Watkins picks up one hind foot, so... They have some bad luck also here tonight. Some bad luck for Paul Mullins and Dennis Watkins, but Matt Tyler and Clay O'Brien Cooper, nothing but good luck as they set the standard with a time of five and seven, first out of the shoots here in Lawton, Oklahoma, where it's time for us to take our marching orders. That's our Robert Tanner from New City, California. I'll say hi to my dad. Oh. Hey, hey. You gotta love this job. Here at Fort Sill, they train day and night to put steel on target. Known as the center of fires, Fort Sill is where the Army conducts its field artillery training on 94,000 acres here in the Great Plains and, of course, the Wichita Mountains as well. 16,000 military personnel on base and on guard, always on duty. 
Carl Larkey along with Butch Knowles here on duty at the Lawton Rangers Rodeo. Team roping well underway. Tyler and Cooper are leaders at five and seven, but David Keen, Dugan Kelly might have something to say about that. They're coming off their first Wrangler National Finals Rodeo performance last year. Of course, they did that with different partners. Well, they did do it, and they just joined up this year, and they are hitting a lick. 5.6 seconds moves them now to number one in the round. You know, this team roping was wide open, but they ran at it like it was as tough as ever because 10 and 8 was winning second when they nodded their head. Didn't matter. Britt Bacchus and Charles Pogue heading into their prime right now. These two have been together for quite some time, Butch. Well, you know, and there are two uh, team that's really hit it off. Of course, Charles Pogue, he's as good a header as there is in the business, and he is fishing right now. So you can see another team from just trying to be real quick. That's what a run of five, six does right in front of you. Backs you in there and makes you want to come and get it, but no time for this great team. Nothing venture, nothing gain. Sometimes the gamble pays off, sometimes it doesn't. And this time, Pogue and Bacchus go home empty handed. Travis Tryon and Matt Robertson, a couple of kids, just getting started from the Treasure State of Montana. Tryon, 20 years old, and Robertson all of 19. Yeah, these boys are just having fun right now. They were 5-2 and two on their first steer, but you can see Travis looked for it and didn't get it done on the head end, so they'll pick up in no time. You know, if this was easy, Butch, anybody could do this. Well, if they had to be, if it was easy, it is easy for these guys. If they got to be 10 seconds, it's the 5-second deal that makes it tough. Well, no one in the world has ever roped a steer quicker than Blaine Lineweaver and Jory Levy, three and five last spring in Austin, Texas. Well, I don't look for him to try to be three and five. This is too easy a rope, and they're going to make a nice run right there. Five and nine. Not going to move to the lead, but they're going to take a good chunk of the money out of the average here at the rodeo, and they're going to pick up some crucial tour points. So mission accomplished mission for those two. Yeah, with a very safe and sure run right there for Lina Weaver and Levy. Well, it all comes down now to a couple of guys from the southeastern part of the country. T.J. Smith out of Florida, Michael Harris from Arkansas. Pretty tough rope if you're trying to move into the top four. Now remember, five and six, that's what they need to be to tie in a hind foot. It's going to cost them five seconds. Would have been five and nine. Goes to ten and nine. Smith and Harris reached the semifinals of the winter tour finale in Vegas last June. However, tonight that 10 and 9, not going to get it done here at the Lawton Rangers Rodeo where three tenths of a second separate the top three. Dugan Kelly, he had the key to victory tonight. David and Dugan have been on a roll. They've won the last couple of rodeos and now they have 33 points and it hasn't always been this good, has it? Uh, no, it hasn't been very good. Uh, the first uh, winter series for the Cop Copenh Copenhagen Cup deal, I didn't have any points and uh, kind of changed my game plan a little at the here later in the last month and a half to just being consistent and catching two feet versus trying to be fast. And it's been paying off. We've been winning a lot more than I had in the earlier part of this year. So. Well, another change that you made is your team roping partner. You guys have just been together since June. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we. Uh, we both did something different the early part of the year and uh, we got hooked up in middle part of June and a couple of weeks, took us a couple of weeks to kind of get things going and once we started winning it's just been rolling from there so he doesn't miss. Those dozen points that Key and Kelly pick up here at the Lawton Rangers Rodeo do them a world of good in the series standings where David Key is now just a half point behind Daniel Green and Dugan Kelly just a half point back of Alan Bach amongst the healers. The rodeo committee here at Lawton knows how to take care of their number one fan. Hundreds of soldiers are here to enjoy food and entertainment rodeo style. Here's a look behind the shoots brought to you by Dodge. <laughs> all the recruits, these are all trainees in the U.S. Army, and we've sold all them a ticket to the rodeo to give them some money back into their general fund, uh, and we also, as part of the deal, we feed them hot dogs. We've got about uh, 2,000 soldiers out today that we're going to feed and help them get the rodeo started tonight. General Strickland, that's uh, the commanding general on base right now, and Colonel Klein uh, are really supporting. They've been out several times, and uh, they're just great to have behind us, and they, they encourage all the troops to be out here, and they just really support us well. Our country was expanding westward. Fort Sill was, uh, was a tremendous part of that. And we've continued to maintain a key point in, in America's readiness by training 
uh, America's soldiers here. We tra train over 24,000 soldiers a year here, and uh, that's an uh, important point for America's military. We brought the privates out, kind of get them out of the training environment for a little while, let them have something different um, than what they've been going through for eight weeks. Uh, some of them eight weeks, some of them are in there six weeks. And um, just let them kind of air out and have a good time. I think we have uh, some time off for the weekend, so we were offered tickets and most of us took it just to get off base. I wasn't going to come originally, but I bought one of the last ones yesterday because all my buddies egged me on. So. I've never been to a rodeo myself. I love rodeos. When we heard, when I heard we were going to a rodeo, I wrote my dad and I was like, oh, we're going to a rodeo. So. <laughs> we're about to graduate from basic training in about five days now, so we're a little excited to be here. Whoa! Just a little excited. We salute the men and women of Fort Sill, some of the best rodeo fans you'll ever find. Well, get out the stopwatch. We're heading off to the races with the ladies of the Wrangler Pro Rodeo Tour. Welcome back to Oklahoma, the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge, where they're making lazy circles in the sky. Carl Arkey, along with Butch Knowles, of course, will be heading down the road towards the tour finale coming up October 25th through the 28th at the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss the barrel racing either. Tana Wright with a very good chance of moving up in the tour standings and even overtaking Christy Peterson, who is our current leader with 29 points. Leading off, Brandy Wilson out of Kansas. Brandy Wilson ran a 17.6 hundredths of a second on her first run. So she can get things done as that horse takes a wide turn on that third barrel, though. That's going to slow things down just a little bit. And she hustles out of the arena. 17 and 3 3 is the standard set by Brandy Wilson for Tana Wright. And Tana, we talked about it before. She's been taking over this tour lately, and she's gotten a lot of help from Mo, her sturdy steed. Uh, this is a great horse. She and Mo have been to the national finals a couple of times already, and she'd like to get back there. Good chance to overtake some ground in our series standings, though, but a tough barrel racing. Brandy Wilson, 1733, was extremely good. And 1748 now puts her number two in the round. So Tana Wright in good shape in second place. As Sherry Survey surveys the situation, Sherry out of Marana, Arizona, former world champion who also won our winter tour finale last June in Las Vegas. Well, if you're setting there with a 1733 like Brandy Wilson, you're watching closely because Sher Sherry Survey can come and get you any time on any one of her horses. She gets around that third barrel in good shape. Now she was 17 and 55 one hundredths on her first run. We'll see if she can better that. Mm, just a tad slower. Just a hair over, but a nice run. 17 and 5, 6, good for third place as Tamara Reinhardt out of Kansas gets ready for her run. It's always nice to see the arenas that are set up with a center alley. That allows the girls to run in and out of the run on the barrels. So things are faster. They come in, they go to that first barrel, get around it. Everything is fast and clean as she heads around that third and final barrel. Boy, these horses, some of the best in the business, 17 and 61 hundreds. We're about to see Big Shot, a pretty good horse ride here. I'll tell you what, these horses, it's all you can do to hold them back. They're ready to go. They know their job, and their job is to come in and get it on. Hurry around those barrels, make clean, tight runs, drive out of it. Sharon Kobold, of course, we've watched her at the national finals many times. Around that third and final barrel. Now Sharon looking at a 17.32 to take the lead. 17 and 7 5, and that's good for fifth place. Again, the time of 17 and 3 3, set by Brandy Wilson, who was first up here today. And here comes Dolores Toole, and I, I kind of doubt that the school bus that she drives back home has this kind of horsepower. <laughs> no, Dolores, she is having a good year. She's 25th in the world standings right now, so she needs a win here. Now, her horse is not handling the ground, or at least she didn't handle it very well in the first barrel. He stumbled just a little bit. That might slow things down a little. 
And it does, 17 and 93 one hundreds. Well, in her spare time, she's an attorney from Austin, Texas. What she really likes doing is defending her world championship in the barrel racing. Here comes Cappy Allen on Chris. Well, we watched Cappy at Salinas, California pick up nine points as she gets around the second barrel in good shape. You know, it's a tough to win one world title, let alone two or three. That shows just a feat like Charmaine James has accomplished 10 world titles. It's not easy. It's amazing how good these women really are. Cappy well, Allen ties for third place go. right now with that time All of 17 down, and 5, 6. And here comes Nancy Powell out of Oklahoma, Kinta, Oklahoma. Is she the one who can overtake the lead? Well, Nancy ran her first run in 17 and 39 one hundredths, and this gal, she can run barrels. And as you can see, age plays no part in what you win in the sport of professional rodeo. Nancy is a competitor, and she's coming out that arena. A great run for Nancy oh, and 17 29. They, these girls on the road full time better hope she just stays in Oklahoma. What a run. You heard the roar from the crowd here at the L.O. Ranch where Teal Rice is the only one with a chance of catching Nancy Powell. Well, Teal won the first round 17 and 36 one hundredths. As she heads for that third and final turn and that horse kind of takes the bit a little bit and doesn't finish his turn. That's going to slow things down a little. And 1781 shows just that. So that time of 17 and 2 9 is going to stand up tonight for Nancy Powell. Experience pays off here at the Lawton Rangers Rodeo as Nancy Powell rides off with the victory. Nancy followed by Wilson Wright, Cappy Allen, and Sherry Servey. Of course, the big news is Tana Wright moving all the way to the top of the leaderboard, now just a half point ahead of Christy Peterson in our tour standings. Well, don't go away. We're about to unload the heavy artillery when we come back on the Wrangler Pro Rodeo Tour. Deep concentration is the key when you're about to climb on board the back of a 2,000 pound animal. Welcome back to the Lawton Rangers Rodeo where it's time to roll out the big guns. Carl Arkey along with Butch Knowles checking the series standings in bull riding. Rob Bell our leader with 29 points, but Jeff Rupert could be our leader by the time this night is over. First up though is Jamie Vallega out of Oklahoma going smokeless. Well smokeless comes from Sammy Andrews and of course if you know Sammy Andrews the most famous bull probably in history he owned Bodacious. So he's known for having great bulls and it's Jamie just found out he got matched up on one of the best. That's why you wear the helmet. You know right there the first round too he comes around he gets whipped down he slaps the bull. That breaks a guy's concentration, but you can see he was behind on this bull the whole way. He was getting dropped off that rope. Trouble right from the start, and he ends up with a no score. So a rough night at the office for Jamie Vallega from Mulhall, Oklahoma. Out of Tomo, Wisconsin rides Fred Betcher, who's drawn Skull's high voltage. Well, Betcher, boy, he's as good as anybody in the business. Two trips he's made to the National Finals Rodeo, and he can ride as good as anyone. A big, long-legged guy, and he's got a smaller bull Having trouble getting those holts in that bull, but he is getting it done. Good aggressive ride for Betcher. You know, a little bull like that, especially for Betcher, he's a taller guy. It's tough because you can't get the feel of a bull. They're quick and your feet are long. You just got to keep hustling to your rope. He does that the whole way. This bull's real quick, comes around. One good thing about a smaller bull, though, they don't have the power that a 2,000 pound bull does. Yeah, but they may be more agile and hostile. Yeah, they're agile and quick. That part of it, that doesn't change. Good ride for Fred. I'll say a high voltage ride for Fred Betcher on Skull's high voltage. Fred out of Toma, Wisconsin, 25 years old, has been to the NFR twice, and here's the form that got him there. Well, you know, and he was good and aggressive. This little bull, he flattened out a few jumps, and he kicked a few jumps. Fred just picked him up every little change. 86 points for Betcher, so now the guys are going to have to ride if they're going to bump him. Fred Betcher is going to love that 86 points. That's going to be tough to beat for Justin Hickey, who's on Dido. Well, Justin scored 80 points on his first bull, but this big Brindle, now compared to Fred's bull, this is what size does. Big, strong, ducks left, ducks right. Great big eliminator. Ugh. And he eliminates Justin Hickey. Jeff Rupert rode well at the California Rodeo. Tonight he's drawn windmill. Well, Jeff Rupert, you know, I've said it a lot. 
He impresses me all the time as this bull jumps and kicks in the chute, gets him into his hand, and he just could not get rocked back over there. So Rupert hits the ground. You know, we've seen Jeff a lot on our tour, and you don't make the tour rounds by falling off bulls. He's just been matched up on some rank ones. This bull hopped and skipped, set him up a little bit into his hand, and then turned back away from it, and he could not get moved back over there to finish the ride. That's too bad. We didn't see it on the replay, Butch, but you mentioned that that bull was bucking before the shoot ever opened up. Yeah, and that that's a little different because they jump and kick in there, and they kind of get you out of shape, and then they come out of there. Sometimes you're a little bit behind. Well, Slade Malone is a promising rookie, only 20 years old. Of course, helps to be 20. You, you think you're going to live forever. <laughs> yeah, when you're 20, nothing looks bad. Boy, tough right there. That bull fake tried to go to the left. He got into the shoot and came right back to the right. So Malone, now we watch Malone at Cody and also Vernal. He's got 13 points when he nodded his head. See this bull, how he comes right around, but he's too close to the chute. He just jumps right back out of it and goes right back to the right and makes tough, short work on Slade Malone. Good job by Kevin Rich and Lance Britton, our bullfighters, to get in there and save Slade Malone. Coming up next, the defending world champion, Cody Hancock. ESPN2's presentation of the Lawton Ranger Rodeo from Lawton, Oklahoma is brought to you by Wrangler, the only jeans and shirts endorsed by the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association. By Original Coors, expect more from an original. Original Coors. By Dodge, do not follow, do not conform, be different. And by Justin Boots, standard of the West since 1879. Well, Justin may set the standard for boots, but right now Fred Betcher is setting the standard for the bull riders here at the Lawton Rangers Rodeo with a score of 86. This is Case Drake from Sayre, Oklahoma, climbing into the cockpit on a big old jet airliner. Well, any score at all will get him at least to second place. We've had one qualified ride, but this big blue bull, he's got a ride going, but you can see the big, long, kind of empty jumps just getting him back on his pockets too far, and once you're there, that's a bad spot to be. Yeah, one second you're there, and the next second you're not. Well, it's just a centrifugal force that gets you rolled out of there. Now watch this again. He makes a good recovery. That bull kind of gets his chin right there. He gets set back down, makes the corner in good shape. But as this bull gets to moving, you see the big rear right there in the drop? Everything just falls away from you, and that just lifts you up. And when you get lifted up, well, that's what happens. No score. But, boy, that bull's done that to a lot of guys. Yes, he has. And... Uh, Case Drake with nothing to be ashamed of right there. This is Cone Bouvier out of Canada, Empress Alberta, traveling partner of Kagan Syret, needs an 87. Well, Coombe, he was a Canadian finalist last year. We watched him pick up 10 points at Oakley, and this bull's trying to get him out there also. Little different style. You know, each one of these bulls bucks so different. This bull kind of hopped and skipped and walked on his front end, so it really made everything really different for Coombe. See him moving around there and just coming around, but see how that lead with that front end of that bull hops and skips, sets him up, and keeps rolling him into that hand? That is a tough bull to ride. And just when you think you have the book on a certain bull, he'll throw you a curve. Well, that's the deal. You know, you can't think of really what they've done, although they have a record of these bulls, and usually the bull will, if he turns back to the left or the right, he usually does that, but these bulls are smart. Once they feel you make one move, they're going to make a counter move. Well, folks who follow rodeo haven't forgotten the battle that Blue Bryant gave Ty Murray back in 98 at the NFR. Well, Blue Bryant almost was the reason Ty Murray didn't win that eighth world title as the all-around and the bull riding title that year. It came down to one bull, <laughs> and Blue and Ty, they battled it all week, but Ty won out, and Blue right now, <laughs> this is not a good feeling because right there you can get kicked. You just know so it's coming. Easy. Oh, boy, you do. What happened? Flip-flop, run out of gas? Well, he just stopped. You know, sometimes these bulls buck so many guys off right out of there. When the bull when the bull rider rides them past that point, they don't really know what to do. This little bull, <laughs> the whistle blew, he stopped. The idea is wait for the bullfighter to get him in and make him buck again to get off. Boy, good ride right there. Blue just sets right there. You see him hustle that outside foot, picks him right up, hustles right back. You see how he moves his feet right back up to that rope. That's where you want to be. 
Good bull ride. And then this bull just stops, waits for the pick, <laughs> waits for the pickup, and waits for the bullfighters to move in there. But 84 points. He didn't stop till after the whistle. Great ride. Must have been a union bull. Yeah, he was a union bull. He said, boys, I've had enough. I'm going to go to my grain. Eight seconds, I'm done for the night. Well, Casey Bays banged heads with a bull in Red Bluff last year, and uh, Casey lost on that occasion. But he's recovered quite nicely and is riding well. Well, he came here. He was 83 points on his first bull, and this bull's got him going. Boy, he's got a good ride going as he keeps lifting, moving over there. But you can see what I mean. These bulls, they're so smart. He felt Casey move over there. Casey had him ridden the whole way going one way. When he jumped out of it, went the other, he set Casey up. Was it after the eight seconds? I hope it was because that was an outstanding effort by Bayes. I think he made it to the buzzer. Boy, good effort right here. This little bull just turns back and gets it on. Casey right there. He's moved in there. Now he's got this bull ridden the whole way. You see him into his hand. Now watch this. Jumps right there and Casey goes, oh my God, I shouldn't have moved over there so far. But it was after the whistle, so Casey gets the score. Great effort for Bays. 82-point score for Casey Bays, who also won the old Fort Days Rodeo in Fort Smith earlier this year. That moves him into third place here in Lawton, where Cody Hancock likes his draw. World champion Cody Hancock is almost on that bubble at number 12 in the Pro Tour standings, but Red Dog should be the bull to get you there, isn't it? Yeah, he's a great bull. They were 86 on the first round at the NFR on him, and then they were just 90 on him at the Tour Finals. Jesse Bell won around on him. Uh, so he's dang sure good enough. If I can do my part, I should get a good check here. As a world champion, I know that you get lots of press, lots of attention. Does that give you any extra stress or anticipation? You know, uh, I don't think it does anymore. I, I think the first couple of months it kind of bothered me a little bit and couldn't get my head exactly right, but uh, it's been a lot of fun. I think I'm riding good and I don't think it's bothered me so far. That's a good point, Butch. It is a little bit of a head game after you win a world championship, and you've got to make that mental adjustment to the pressure. You do, and some guys handle it. Some guys, they take a while. I think Cody, though, it took him a while, but he is waking up and riding good now as he's got a tough little Red Bull, hops and skips. Oh, it is close. It is close as Cody, we've watched him on two other tour stops. He has not made the whistle on the stop itself. And Cody, as you can see, indicated right there, they got him for slapping the bull. That's too bad. What a bull ride. This bull jumps, kicks. Lots of rare right here. You see a lot of drop right there. Cody is doing everything he can to keep from getting whipped down. Picks him right back up, but right maybe right there is where they thought they got him. I didn't I couldn't tell. It was too close to the whistle. But that's too bad right there. Now, Cody's going to pick up some points. Everybody that makes the two around picks up at least one point. As more guys buck off, of course, the more points they split between them. So great effort, really, for Hancock. He's riding good. If you're a competitor like Cody Hancock, you're not going to be happy with that kind of a result. Here comes Philip Elkins, last dance, last chance. Boy, Philip started a good ride. That bull dropped him into that inside spin, though. Cowtown Classic. This is a calf out of the great bull cow town that Benny Butler packed for so many years, and he was a scary dude. This little bull turned back, and you could see Philip was in there the whole way, just couldn't get up out of there. Philip won $72,000 last December in Las Vegas, but Fred Betcher takes home the big paycheck tonight at the Lawton Rangers Rodeo. This wasn't the first time that Fred has matched up with high voltage. You actually had him at last year's summer tour final. Yeah, I was um, really excited to have him. I knew I had him last night, and uh, he's a little bull, makes it, which makes it a little harder for us taller guys to ride him. But um, I got along with him good last time, and I was really glad to have him again. So Fred Betcher picking up 12 points here. He now has 24 altogether. Good for sixth place in the series standings where Jeff Rupert is still your leader with 30 points. Time now for the original course, thrills and spills. Take you back, back, back to Jess Martin in the saddle bronc riding. Well, Jess Martin has been on fire. What a battle we've watched between he and Dan Mortensen. Jess comes out on top tonight. He is thrilled to move back up to the number one spot on our leaderboard. That's where he needs to be. Jess Martin just one point ahead of Dan Mortensen on that leaderboard. Our next stop, the Pikes Peak or Bust Rodeo coming up in Colorado Springs, October 14th. Check your local listings. For Butch Knowles, I'm Carl Larkey saying so long from Lawton, Oklahoma. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information, log on to ESPN.com.